guys, my name is Kelsey and my topic for my oral presentation is The Brothers by Louisa May Alcott. So first I'm going to start by giving a couple things from her background. Um, she was actually raised in a very poor family with her sisters and her mom and dad and back then it wasn't a woman's job to, you know, provide for the family, it was the man's. But she loved writing so she started writing and she was like you know i'm pretty good and she was 12 years old so whatever um she showed her sisters and then a family that she was close to and i think that's really cool that you know she was like okay i'm good like i know that i'm good and i'm gonna show people that i'm good so she put herself out there and she was actually so good that she started making money off of doing this so she was kind of like the hero of her family just like bringing money in because they were very very poor and her dad loved it and he was actually a female abolitionist so he supported her and I think that's really awesome because you know not a lot of people back then especially men would have supported that just because they believed that they were the makers of the house or not even the makers just like the providers so she started writing and in one of her stories the brothers which can also be known as my contraband i believe but she actually wrote that and it starts out as herself um but her name in the book is dane and she w became a nurse so she doesn't have any background in being a nurse and she doesn't have any experience but you know they needed people so bad that they were willing to just allow anyone that with a heart to come in and help these people who were hurt um, and had fevers and just anything like that. So she came in and she was taking care of uh, people and she sees this guy who looks very like promiscuous and like she's just curious about him. Like he was kind of good looking. So you know that's like a romance in the making so you think. But she sees him and she doesn't say anything at first but he um tilts his head up and because he was sitting on a bed with his head down so all she sees is this but on this side of his face it was cut and bruised from i guess just whatever like was going on around him at the time so um he was very hurt and she saw that and she was like Ugh. like <laughs> kind of like oh he's not as cute as i thought but you know like he's still like i'm still curious about him so she kind of likes him like she doesn't know why but um just like any girl honestly like we're curious about everyone so she was still curious about him so she was taking care of someone and his name was the captain and she got volunteered or she volunteered herself because she's so noble and wanted to be helpful because they asked the doctor asked all the nurses like who can stay overnight and help this man for you know overnight he has typhoid fever like you just have to stay up with him make sure that he's getting enough fluids um just you know try to take care of him as much as you can and comfort him and if he dies he doesn't die alone okay so she does that she volunteers um she knows that she's a good person and she has compassion so she volunteers to take care of the captain and she goes in and she's sitting down and you know it's in the middle of the night so she falls to sleep like anyone would fall asleep if they're sitting down on watch watching a patient and she wakes up to this guy that she was so curious about with the cuts on his face and he's like hush like don't scream don't open the window and call out for anyone the door is locked i have the key in my pocket like you're not going anywhere don't say anything i'm gonna kill this man pretty much and she didn't understand why she was like oh my gosh i'm in a room with a crazy person and a sick person and her priority was the sick guy she was trying to take care of the captain even though she didn't like him even though you know he wasn't a good guy she was still trying to take care of him so he then is just acting frantic whatever just doing whatever just moving around and she says in the book or in her story that uh, he was a lunatic she was in a room with a lunatic so whenever I think of that I just think of like he's being really fidgety um but so she 
ask him and just try to keep his mind busy and like off of the fact that he's about to hurt someone else so she's asking him like why like why like why are you about to do this or do you know him what did he do to you what can we do to prevent this so he tells her he says my wife I know that he took her I know that he knows where she is or something or he did something to her and she's confused Dane is like well like what did he do how do you know him and he says this is my brother so the title is right there so they're brothers um but he wants to kill him because i get it kind of shows like not all relationships from siblings are good so anyway so she is still trying to talk to him still trying to keep his mind busy and she comes up with a solution she says what if I give you a way out of this I can give you some money you can go to Massachusetts go away and just get your mind off of this and I will figure out what happened to Lucy which is his wife and she says you don't need to have like this death on your hands like he has typhoid fever life is gonna do what it needs to if you will so in my head that makes me believe that she believes in karma I guess because she's saying like life is gonna do what it's gonna do with him he's on his deathbed he's gonna die and if he doesn't then that's like you're still safe from that um and he's still gonna have to live with himself regardless so he's like you know what you're right so she um sends him away for the night and he lets her go and she gets the doctor and then the captain gets better so the next day he comes in Robert comes in the room where Dane is and he's in nice clothing he's no longer in scraps and he's like thank you so much for talking me out of that I'm glad that I didn't do it but I still wish that he was dead so he still has like these thoughts where he wants him to die but he's really grateful that she didn't do it and I think that he's also grateful that she didn't turn him in from like even attempting to do so so it shows compassion on her side for literally everybody and so she gives him his money and he goes to Massachusetts and the captain eventually wakes up and she asks him the first thing she asks him she doesn't ask him if he's okay she doesn't ask him like how do you feel she straight up just asks him as soon as he opens his eyes where is Lucy and it turns out she killed herself and we don't know why it doesn't go into detail of why she killed herself because that was a short conversation between her and the captain so she tells Robert and he is glad you know that he that she told him and that he found out what happened to her he had a, has a peace of mind kind of instead of not knowing and um, I think it's really relatable with everybody like everyone needs to know instead of being like not clear about things so eventually she finds her way back to him in a hospital where she's taking care of people and she sees him and on his bed his name says Robert Dane and so it shows how like he's appreciative of her because whenever he came in the first time he didn't have a last name so taking her name kind of just shows like the compassion that she showed for him like put a really big impact on his life and I think that he's forever grateful for her because she didn't turn him in she talked him out of killing someone and he now knows what happened to his wife like she passed away she killed herself and he knows that so he'll have that peace of mind and he was grateful to her so he took her name and I think that that's really cool so that is my take on the brothers from Louisa May Alcott thanks guys for watching